have a nice time today i will talk about a new algebraic structure which is named as integral domains we will prove a theorem which states that cancellation laws hold in a ring r if and only if r has no divisors of zero so let us prove the theorem first suppose cancellation laws hold in r that means that if a b c belongs to r and a b equal to a c then by left cancellation law b equal to c and if a b equal to c b then by right cancellation law a equal to c so we can use these two properties now and we have to show that r has no divisors of zero so we will take two elements a b belongs to r and suppose that a into b equal to zero if a not equal to zero and b not equal to zero then the elements a and b are divisors of zero now we have to show that there are no divisors of zero in r for that we have to show that either a equal to zero or b equal to zero here suppose a is not equal to zero now we can write the equation a into b equal to zero as a into b equal to a into zero since a into zero is equal to zero so using the left cancellation law we can conclude that b equal to zero so if a not equal to zero then b becomes zero similarly suppose b not equal to zero then as in the previous case we can write the equation a b equal to zero as a b equal to zero b since zero into b equal to zero and using the right cancellation law we can conclude that a equal to zero so if b not equal to zero then a becomes zero so we can conclude that if the product a b equal to zero in r then either a equal to zero or b equal to zero for any two elements a b in r that means that r has no divisors of zero now we will prove the reverse part that is we will suppose r has no divisors of zero and we have to show that cancellation laws hold in the ring r so to prove the cancellation law we have to take three elements a b c belongs to r and we will assume that if a not equal to zero and a into b equal to a into c then this implies b equal to c so this is the left cancellation law for that we will take three elements a b c belongs to the ring r we will suppose that a not equal to zero and a b equal to a c in capital r we have to show that b equal to c now consider the expression a b minus a c this can be written as a into b minus c because in a ring multiplication is distributive over addition so a b minus a c can be written as a b plus minus a c and it becomes a into b minus c and a b minus a c is actually equal to zero since a b equal to a c therefore we have the expression a into b minus c equal to zero we have already assumed that a is not equal to zero and we know that r has no divisors of zero therefore in r if product of two elements equal to zero either one of them must be equal to zero since r has no divisors of zero here since a not equal to zero this implies that b minus c equal to zero that means that b equal to c so what happens if a b equal to a c we arrive at the conclusion that b equal to c if r has no divisors of zero in other words if r has no divisors of zero then left cancellation law holds in r similarly we can show that right cancellation law also holds in r so we proved the theorem cancellation laws hold in a ring r if and only if r has no divisors of zero when we want to find the roots of polynomials if the coefficients of the polynomials belongs to a ring in which there is no divisors of zero then the solution of the polynomials becomes easy if we want to find the roots of this equation x square plus 5x plus 6 equal to zero we can easily factorize this equation as x plus 3 into x plus 2 equal to zero and if the coefficients of the polynomial belong to a ring in which there is no divisors of zero then product of two elements in the ring equal to zero implies that either one of them must be equal to zero so we can conclude that either x plus 3 equal to zero or x plus 2 equal to zero that means that x equal to minus 3 or x equal to minus 2 
Likewise, if the polynomial belongs to a ring in which there is no divisors of zero, then the solutions of polynomials becomes easy. Now we are going to study about such a ring in which there are no divisors of zero. Let us have the definition of integral domains. An integral domain D is a commutative ring with unity 1 nautical 0 and containing no divisors of 0. So suppose we have a ring R with operations addition and multiplication. When will we call R as an integral domain? R must possess some additional properties. One of the additional property is R must be a commutative ring. That means that multiplication is commutative. Then second one, R must have the unity. There exists the multiplicative identity 1 in capital R. And there is an additional condition that one, that one must, no, must not equal to 0. So there exists a multiplicative identity 1 which is not equal to 0. Actually this means that the ring R is not equal to the set containing only 0. Therefore here 1 not equal to 0 means that R contains at least one non-zero element. Now third property is that R has no divisors of 0. So if a ring R possess these three additional conditions, then we call such a ring as an integral domain. Therefore, an integral domain D is a commutative ring with unity and which contains no devices of zero. One of the most common example is set of all integers with addition and multiplication of integers. We know that Z is a ring in which multiplication is commutative. Then there exists the multiplicative identity which is the integer 1 itself since a into 1 equal to 1 into a equal to a for all a belongs to Z. And also we know that if we take two integers n and m such that n into m equal to 0 which implies that either n equal to 0 or m equal to 0. Therefore Z with addition and multiplication of integers satisfies all the properties of an integral domain. So this is the most common example for an integral domain. Now what about the ring set P? with addition modulo p and multiplication modulo p as the operations. In the last class we showed that if p is a prime then set p has no divisors of 0. Also we know that multiplication modulo p is commutative in set p and also set p contains the integer 1 which is the multiplicative identity. Therefore set p with addition modulo p and multiplication modulo p modulo p where p is a prime becomes an example of an integral domain. Now if we consider the matrix ring m2 of z2 which contains set of all 2 by 2 matrices having entries in z2. z2 contains the elements 0 and 1. So we are considering set of all matrices 2 by 2 matrices having entries 0 or 1 and consider the operations usual matrix addition and multiplication. Is it an integral domain? We can easily show that this is not an integral domain because we can cite an example 1 0 0 0 which is a non-zero element in M2 of Z2 and again 0 0 1 0 which is again a non-zero element in M2 of Z2 but the product equal to 0 0 0 0 which is the additive identity in M2 of Z2. Therefore we located two elements, two non-zero elements 1 0 0 0 and 0 0 1 0 in N2 of Z2 but their product equal to the additive identity 0 0 0 0. Therefore, M2 of Z2 contains divisors of 0. Here 1 0 0 0 and the matrix 0 0 1 0 are divisors of 0 in M2 of Z2. Therefore, M2 of Z2 with the operations addition and multiplication of matrices is not an integral domain. Let us consider one more example. Suppose R and S are two rings and we are considering the direct product of R and S which is R cross S where the operations are defined in this way. Suppose X1 Y1 and X2 Y2 are two elements of R cross S then the sum of these two elements becomes X1 plus X2 comma Y1 plus Y2 and the direct product becomes X1 X2 comma Y1 Y2. So addition is defined in this way and multiplication is defined in this way in the direct product R cross S. Now we have to think whether this R cross S with this addition and multiplication becomes an integral domain. Surely the answer is no because R0 and 0S are two elements of R cross S 
where R belong to capital R and S belong to capital S and R and S are not equal to 0. Therefore, these two elements are two non-zero elements of R cross S. But what about R0 into 0S? As per the product defined here, the product becomes R into 0 comma 0 into S. That is 0, 0. So, if we choose R0 and 0 S as two non-zero elements of R cross S, the product becomes always 0, 0. Therefore, here R0 and 0 S are 0 devices in R cross S if the small r and S are not equal to 0. Therefore, if R and S are two rings, R cross S is not a integral domain. So, if we consider set of all rings, if multiplication is commutative, such a rings are commutative rings and if the ring contains a multiplicative identity, then such a rings are called rings with unity and if a ring contains unity and it is commutative and if all the non-zero elements are units, that means that every non-zero element has a multiplicative inverse also, such rings are called fields. So, fields are actually rings with unity which are commutative also and every non-zero element is a unit. Now, what is the position of our integral domains? Integral domains are rings in which multiplication is commutative, which contains unity and which has no devices of zero. So, we have to locate integral domains in this intersection part. In the next class, we will show that this is the actual position of integral domains. That is, integral domain contains set of all fields. In other words, every field is an integral domain. From this figure, we can conclude that some of the integral domains are fields. We will prove that every finite integral domains are fields. We will prove these two important results in the next class. In the last class, we had discussed about solution of polynomials whose coefficients are belongs to some specific rings. These are the solutions to the assignment problems given the 